This is the survival analysis video on the proportional hazards assumption in the Cox model. Please recall that if the proportional hazards assumption holds, then if a patient has a greater probability of surviving at time one, that patient will have a greater probability of surviving at all the other follow-up times as well. As an illustration, if e to the beta 1 associated with the diagnosis of atrial fibrillation is 5, we can simply say that atrial fibrillation increases the risk of stroke by a factor of 5 and don't have to quantify this statement according to the length of the follow-up period. Non-proportional hazards is a form of interaction, which can be illustrated by put, putting into our standard form for an interaction. The impact of x on y depends on z. Here the impact of x on survival depends on the length of follow-up. We know that not all interactions are important and that the only types that we need to worry about are the clinically important ones. As usual, we first assess whether an interaction is present, and then we assess whether it's important. A good place to start is with mechanism of action, in other words, using your knowledge of the underlying medical science. This slide illustrates three possible mechanisms of action, of which only the latter provides a definite red flag. On the other hand, for example, if the impact of an intervention is positive but decays over time, then if you fit a proportional hazards model, what you'll be estimating is the average effect over time. And this might very well be sufficient for your purposes. Formal statistical tests for proportionality exist, but they can have problems with too much power for large data sets, too little power for small ones. In practice, statisticians tend to make the assessment both substantively, as previously discussed, and graphically. When looking at pictures, you should keep the caveats on the slide in mind. Crossing hazard functions don't necessarily produce survival curves that cross, and proportional hazards don't necessarily produce sur survival curves that differ by the same vertical distance. Indeed, they can't for an outcome of death, since survival curves will eventually meet at zero. Based on the previous illustrations, your first thought for a picture that could be used to assess proportionality would probably be a, log, a plot of the log hazard over time. For example, in a randomized trial, you'd produce these plots separately for each intervention, and then check to see whether the same vertical distance is maintained over time. It turned out that this idea will only work well for very large data sets, and a plot of log negative log survival curve over time does the same thing. These plots are only a place to start, the reason essentially being the distinction between scatter plots and partial regression plots that we encountered when dealing with continuous outcomes. Of course, there are more complicated things you can do, but in practice, the procedure I've described is usually sufficient. 